Basically, I can't choose a style when it comes to transition edits, at least so I thought. But I've come to a conclusion that I just have sort of a jug slash glitch style. Whenever I post this style, I always see people commenting like they wish they knew how to do it. And there's like no tutorials on how, which is like halfway true because I do see some tutorials. But anyways, so hopefully if you're interested in learning this style, this video helps you. I'm going to be teaching you all of this today. And pretty much this is just two transitions, but I'm going to teach you like every single single thing I did in here because even though this is like only two transitions I used the same concept in the whole edit that's literally half of the style is just reusing everything so before we actually go into after effects I need to preface a few things that are actually going to help you so don't skip okay listen half of the style is made up of shakes effects one frames and good choices of clips. This type of style is known to be like very edgy and dark, I guess. So pick good audio choices, okay? Um, very fast audios. Really, it's just shakes and basic transition. Buckle up and get ready to be stressed out, even though it's easy, but editing just may stress you out. Like I said, we're only gonna do two transitions, but I'm breaking them up little by little because everything that I'm teaching you here, you're gonna just recycle for your edit. First, you need your base. And for my base, uh, I just have a zoom out and uh, brightness. Am I okay? Yeah, I just have a zoom out and brightness. Also, clip choice, once again, is actually kind of important because it just is. <laughs> so I hope you already know how to do a zoom out. For brightness and contrast, I have 100 to zero. You're also gonna have motion tile. Just basic things that I hope you know. If you don't know, then I am so sorry, but you're on your own. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna add is a Y shake. Y shakes, I use this a lot in these types of edits. Um, really, there's nothing special about the shakes in these types of edits. It's usually twitch, Y, or an X shake. So I'm gonna teach you how to do my first version of a Y shake. The reason why I have two versions that I use is because one is kind of more bouncy. For now, I'm gonna teach you the bouncy Y shake. That's what we're naming it, okay? I'm gonna use blur more curves for my Y shake. All right, so follow along, relax, don't stress out. So for the first keyframe, it's shift X, and we're gonna make this 1800 i just went the wrong way around that and then you're gonna move over one frame and do around 400 and then we're gonna go over two frames i'm gonna do around negative 65 then we're gonna go over three frames uh let's do 17 and then we're gonna go over four frames i'm gonna do negative eight and then we're gonna go over five frames and then we're gonna do we're gonna do two and then five frames over again and then just put zero trust me for this type of edit you want to have that in your toolbox and then for mac if you highlight all of your keyframes hold option and move them to a certain part of the clip you can make it faster or you can make it uh longer or slower sometimes when i'm feeling a bit fun i like to add a skew shake as well um so look up transform and add it to your clip so for skew between 35 and 40. i'm actually gonna do 40 for my first keyframe and then click the stopwatch to make your first keyframe and then we're gonna go all the way to the end of our clip and do zero for our last keyframe we're gonna highlight our keyframes and then easy ease them and now we're gonna go into the graph editor so we're not making a basic regular graph like we usually do i'm just making a quick little graph where the i like to call them sticks because they literally look like yellow sticks um so i don't make the sticks like all up against each other <laughs> they just need to be a little further out because we want it to bounce a little. Then we're gonna go to the one underneath skew and this is where things get tricky. So I need you to pay attention. So you're gonna hold down option and then click the stopwatch, okay? While you're holding down option. It's gonna turn red and it's gonna look scary, but it's fine. You're gonna go to this little text box and do time, the little star, and I'm gonna do 400. Now adjust it how you need to. I'm gonna move the sticks up a little bit more. It's supposed to be a little bounce, you know? It's kind of cute. 
Um, so that's how you do the skew shake for this style. I don't use that for every time I do a zoom out transition, but I use it pretty, pretty frequently. I usually use it for my first transition with these types of edits. Now, this looks good already, but I wanna add something else to the zoom. So let's do that by going to layer, new, and adjustment layer. You're gonna wanna cut off the adjustment layer at the end of your first clip and then delete the rest. We're gonna look up optics, um, compensation. First things first is just tick this little box with reverse lens distortion. Just click that, make sure it has the check over it. Um, and then for our first keyframe, we're gonna do around mm, 90. And then we're gonna go to the end of our clip and do zero as our second keyframe. See, it just looks so much more bouncy to me. I don't know. Jug style, you don't really use this all the time. I just use it sometimes because I like to feel fun and it's my style, okay? So I can do whatever I want. Click S on your keyboard to bring up scale. Click the stopwatch, keep it at 100, and then go to the end of your clip. We're gonna make this around 110. And it just zooms in a little. It doesn't really do anything too crazy. I just had that for peace of mind. So now we're gonna wanna lean into the second clip a little bit because we have done literally nothing with it. So now we're gonna do kind of a slide shake. I use these all the time. Oh my God, what am I doing? Am I okay? So we're gonna click the stopwatch for shift X and it's gonna remain at zero for our first keyframe. Then we're gonna go three frames over, one, two, three. For our second keyframe, after we go three frames over, gonna be negative 65. And then we're gonna go three frames over again. One, two, three. And for our last keyframe, we're gonna go two frames over. So one, two, and we're gonna make that negative 1000. Highlight all of the X um, keyframes and easy ease them. Now you may need to drag it out a little bit to make it look more like it's going into a shake. So since we just did kind of like our beginning to the slide shake, we're gonna have to finish it. So what I like to do is copy all these keyframes that we just did and I'll paste them to my second clip. And then we're just gonna go over each keyframe and we're gonna do the opposite numbers. We ended with negative 1000, so we're gonna do negative 1000. Make sure you put on reflect for the warp X and warp Y. You may have to adjust the keyframes a little because they're being weird, but it's okay. Then we're gonna go over, we have negative 65. We're just gonna make it 65. And then we're gonna go over to here. It's 100 and we're gonna do negative 100. So pretty much since we copy and pasted the other keyframes, we're just doing the opposite on these, if that makes sense. And then for the last one, we're gonna do zero because we're bringing it back to zero. And it looks like this. It looks really good. It looks bouncy, guys. Oh my God, I'm like proud of myself. Even though I do this style all the time, like sometimes I'd be forgetting how to edit. So literally when I feel lazy, I just do this transition and it's fine so now we're gonna do a bit of um basic work make sure you have motion tile on push s for scale and our first keyframe is going to remain 100 go all the way to the end of this clip and do 110 for your second keyframe and then we're going to click r to bring up rotation click the stopwatch leave it at zero for your first keyframe go all the way to the end of your clip and i like to make this around six or negative six it doesn't matter i think that looks fine because it's just tilting a little bit and zooming in a little bit. I think that looks good. So now we're gonna learn one frames. If you don't know what one frames are, it's a simple concept. For one frames, it's basically just for like one second of the clip. It's just gonna have like one effect on there. And it's just gonna be like a flash or something just to make it look good. We're gonna go to layer, new, and do an adjustment layer. And then we're just gonna move one frame over. So move the time indicator over just once and then we are going to delete the rest so look up invert add it to your clip and then all you're gonna do is just change invert from rgb to lightness then we're gonna add star glow and we're gonna change the current settings to lightness um like we did with invert where is that at hello uh oh sorry it's not lightness it's um change it from current settings to white star and then you can keep the rest as is and it's gonna just be that white flash so one frame before your first clip ends add an adjustment layer and then for this adjustment layer add 10 and then map to black i'm gonna change it to white so pretty much this is just a white flash and then for your first frame of the second clip add another adjustment layer invert and star glow again so i'm just going to copy and paste the settings we did for the first 
um, one frame and copy and paste them here. So I like to use my coloring called Forest. You can buy it in my pay hip. This is typically what I use for my LE edits and um, it's pretty much my main coloring right now. <laughs> I do plan on making a tutorial on how to make this coloring if you're interested. So keep an eye out for that. And then after I add my coloring, I like to add Flickr. So look up S Flickr, you need the Sapphire plugin. And I just move the amplitude to like 1.8. It just depends, maybe 1.6. It just depends on the vibe of the edit. And then I'll add some panning, which I have a tutorial on that. So yeah, guys, that was it. I hope everything makes sense. It's really important to understand when you hear like move over two frames or this is a one frame, you really have to understand that for this type of style because and not even just for this style in general. If you wanna watch more edits like these, you should follow my Instagram. That's where I post transition edits. I just don't have a posting schedule anymore. I just be posting whenever I want. Um, that's kind of sad. I've been putting this off for so long. <laughs>